we can start just a second. All right. Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining in to today's Design Nuances Edu series. The objective of the series is to learn a new topic specific to design architecture of fashion, get introduced to a new school and understand why the school exists. And the third objective is to interact with an expert and absorb the knowledge that they have to share. Um, the protocol to be followed in this web webinar, the, the agenda will be about 15 minutes. We'll be speaking about the school, about 40 minutes towards the topic, and then we can go on with Q&A. Please keep your microphones on mute and do comment, be active, switch your cams on, be active, respond in the chat box. If you'd like to unmute, you're most welcome to do so. Uh, but just raise your hand and then you'll be given an opportunity. So today's session is a webinar on graphic design illustrations, right? Or illustrations and graphic design. We have Professor Jyotsna Raghunathan, who's going to be doing this. Uh, Professor Jyotsna has been involved with teaching and mentoring students from the last 20 years, right? So she's a filmmaker, but has worked on, you know, uh, in both the corporate, corporate industry as well as in the academic area. Um, she's been very active in the academic space where she's been the HOD of digital film at SAE College. Uh, she's worked with Pearl Academy as well. And she's worked on a wide range of UG and PG courses. And she's also presented a lot of research papers, both in India and abroad. Um, if you are interested to find out more information about ITM, you could click on the DQ Labs uh, the DQ Edge College listing, and um, and you could also uh, apply to the college there. Um, we have Mr. Mandar Gupta, Gupta from ITM. Mandar, good morning. Uh, good morning, Dion. Thanks a lot for welcoming us. Uh, good morning, kids. Uh, yeah, Professor Josna is just joining in. Uh, uh, shall I start with just a brief of uh, the college? Yes, you, yes, you can, and I've uh, I've given you screen sharing, and so, you can use that as well. Uh, okay. So I know the kids are more uh, keen towards the workshop, and you know, uh, getting to know more about the graphic illustration. So I won't take much uh, uh, of the time as you allocated fifteen minutes. I'll just go through a small presentation about what we are, followed by a video of our campus. I'm just sh sharing the screen. Uh, good morning, Mandar. Uh, yeah, hey, good morning, Professor. Uh, Professor, I'm just uh, going through just a small presentation. Once that is done, we can move sure, towards sure. your part. Sure, yeah. please carry uh, on. I hope yeah. my uh, screen is uh, visible. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. Yes, you uh, can uh, put it on, on presentation yeah. mode, please. Yeah. I think uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Now it's now it's done. Yeah. Uh, so hi, very good morning, students. Uh, I'll just give a brief about what we are. So we are ITM Institute of Design and Media. We are a part of ITM group of institutions, uh, which is a thirty-year-old group. Uh, ITM Institutes of Design and Media started in the year two thousand eight under the name IFDD, which was a fashion and technology college. And in the year 2019, we started with our uh, BTES program. So uh, this year, in the year 2023, we'll be having a, our first BTES uh, batch passing out. Uh, so these are the courses that we have. We have BTES in fashion design, BTES in interior and design, VFX and animation, and visual communication. Uh, these all are four years courses. Uh, these are the UGC approved courses that we have. 
so why uh, you should uh, be taking admission to ITM, IDM or what to be offered different from other colleges is first of all the technology advanced courses. All the courses that we have are industry integrated courses. I'll just give an example of that in the next slide. Uh, we have around more than 30 full-time faculties. Apart from that, we have around 12 master classes that we conduct from industry experts that visit our campus every uh, semester. Uh, the fee structure is reasonable compared to uh, other design colleges. Uh, Industry-centric skills. So the, all the uh, programs are designed by Politecnico Milano, which is one of the top institute in uh, Europe. So the curriculum is followed in that way. International exposure. Yes, we do have international exposure. Uh, what does international exposure means is uh, either you can complete your all the four years in India or we give you the option either to complete two years in India and then we have our partner, La Salle College, wherein you can go to Vancouver or Melbourne. Yeah. So regarding the industry uh, twin program that I was just talking about. Yeah. So ITM Institute of Design and Media is in uh, tie up with Prime Focus Academy. Uh, so if you know the movies like Bahubali, Avengers, uh, Tanaji, uh, then uh, uh, the Hollywood movies like uh, the Marvel movies, so these, all the animation work is basically done by Prime Focus and they are our partners. So the course of animation and VFX that we run at our campus is basically uh, the curriculum, the faculties, the internship and placement are from Prime Focus. Uh, so the international pathways, as I told you, we have option for two plus two, that is La Salle College. So either a student can go to Melbourne, Barcelona, Spain, and Vancouver. Similarly, uh, this is Politecnico Milano. We have student exchange program with them. Uh, internships and placements. Uh, so these are some of our top internship and placement companies. Uh, so what we do is we have a portal wherein students come and register for the openings that we have and the placement cells then take ahead with. Uh, the hostel facilities. So we have our own hostel, which is approximately around two kilometers from our campus, which is gone by us. Uh, so entrance exams, yes. So we do conduct entrance exams. Uh, so as you know, currently the situation of uh, you know, the pandemic, whether there are uh, going to be offline exams or online exams. So what we have done is currently we are conducting offline exams in Mumbai and Pune. And the rest of India, we have online exams. So currently there are two cycles that we are conducting. The first is on 23rd of April and the second cycle is on 21st of uh, May. Apart from that, we'll be having a June cycle, but the date is not declared yet. So that will be probably an offline exam for Pan India. So in Bangalore also we'll be having a Pan India offline exam. Uh, what is the exam pattern? Yeah. So the exam pattern is simple. You have to go undergo to a common intelligence test. It's a 60 minutes test that we have. Uh, it's based on English, maths, logical reasoning. Uh, it's MCQ based questions that you need to go. Uh, after that, there's a portfolio evaluation round. So you need to go evaluate, uh, upload your portfolio uh, around eight to 10 of your top works that you have. And the faculty goes through it, followed by 15 to 30 minutes of personal interview. So once you clear all these rounds, uh, within a period of 10 days, uh, if you are uh, selected, you'll be getting a offer letter and then you can proceed with the admission. Uh, these are the weightages that we have for all the three, uh, you know, exams. So uh, that was just a brief up about uh, campus and how we work and what are the, you know, uh, admission criteria. What I'll do is I'll just take you through a small uh, a video which shows our campus. So you can just understand how uh, we are and what is what are the facilities available.
just hold on a second, please. While Mandar is getting that set up, there's a question from Tarni, who is yeah. Asked, yeah, who's asking about the admission cycles. Um, Mandar, are you set up or? Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm just sharing it. All right, just right. we'll we'll come back to your question, Tarni. Yeah, I'll answer it uh, in the chat box. some issue with my folder. You may have to share your sound as well. Yeah, yeah. Video. yeah. The software just went for an update. So, yeah. Uh, but you know, is it fine if uh, Josna man take over and I'll uh, share it at the end of the... Uh, sure, topic? sure. That, yeah. That's great, but uh, if we can answer Tarani's question. Yeah, first, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, first cycle and second cycle. Uh, and yeah, uh, so uh, we have two cycles currently that one will be in April and one will be uh, May. So, these both cycles are totally different. And the uh, third cycle that we are conducting, that will be in the month of June. So, that will be probably 18th of June. Uh, we'll be sharing all the details with you about the entrance exam and the process and if you are doing it in the offline mode then it will be uh, basically uh, located in Bangalore too wherein you can come and visit us and uh, it will be like uh, uh, 10 morning 10 to 2 it will be the exam cycle wherein you can get your portfolio physically in terms it is an online cycle and you just need to upload it all right thanks thanks for that mother sure. uh Jotna, I think It'll be great to have you on. Yeah. Uh, thank yeah. You. Hi. Hi. Thank Priyanka. you so much for joining in, Jotsa. Uh, it's my pleasure. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this session. Uh, it's always wonderful to interact with young students uh, on a bright Sunday morning. <laughs> it's looking Absolutely. good. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah. you can take over from here. Right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Uh, so uh, good morning, all of you. Uh, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the topic of the day is, of course, um, illustration in graphic design. But since uh, this is a part of a very larger picture of, of visual communication, I'm going to start out talking a little bit about that and moving on to the specifics of illustration in graphic design. And then let's make it more interactive because uh, this is not something where I'm going to be showing you videos or anything that more comes under the domain of VFX and animation. So today it's more of me talking to you, uh, but I'm here to clarify all of your doubts and please feel free to ask me any questions. Uh, I think the more interactive we make it, the more interesting it's going to be, right? Um, so starting up, um, I think what I'm seeing here on Mr. Dion Dissa's screen, uh, this nice little image which you see in one corner of the screen, uh, this is a very good example in itself of illustration in graphic design. Um, it's, uh, see, the whole domain of graphic design, the very word graphic, Okay, comes from the Latin word graphos, okay, and graphos means to draw. Um, there's a question coming in right now from, is it Atulia? Atulia, would you like to ask your question or should I carry on and will you ask it uh, later on? No, please go ahead. Right, okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> right, so graphic design, the very word graphic refers to drawing, okay? It means to illustrate, to draw, to communicate. Let's go back a little bit in time, right? Um, 
actually, let's go back a long way in time, right back to the prehistoric era, uh, where it all began. In a sense, you can trace back the history of graphic design itself to the prehistoric era. Because as you know, uh, language was something that developed over time. Spoken, spoken language, oral communication was refined going forward. However, there was a point in time where our very ancient ancestors, prehistoric ancestors had no way of communicating because there was no common unified language. It was all sounds and gestures and drawings, right? So the very first instances of graphic design, you could say, were those messages that were left on cave uh, walls, what you call as cave uh, paintings or rock drawings where they communicated a particular important message like for example that. for uh, danger you know there would be something just give me a minute please i'm just having some uh, technique yeah uh, so a particular set of images put together would mean danger um, a particular set of images put together would uh, refer to water or food resources available close by. Um, something put together could refer to disease. Okay, this was the way our ancestors communicated before the advent of language. Um, I think once language came in, especially the spoken, uh, the written text, uh, for some time the image uh, part of it um, started not, I wouldn't say being devalued, but yes, it became a little bit overlooked in the sense that it was being used, but they were not seeing how powerful the image was. But all through medieval period, all through uh, the time before we came to maybe the 18th century or 19th century, uh, images were a very powerful part of communication in terms of signposts, in terms of maps, in terms of um, you know uh, directions to a particular place, because not the entire population was always uh, capable of understanding written language, right? So this is how it evolved. This is a brief about how graphic design evolved and the importance of illustration, which has been there right from the beginning of history. Now, looking at it in contemporary times, uh, graphic design is a domain that comes under the very large uh, area of visual communication. Uh, graphic design is primarily used in advertising, in marketing, in uh, social media networking and marketing, uh, and practically uh, every aspect of life that you see in terms of uh, commercial activity, profit loss, you see it everywhere. So it, whether it's your billboards, whether it's your posters, um, you know, displays in malls and shops, uh, down to your social media, your ba banners and advertising on social media, all of this involves graphic design at the heart of it. And how does graphic design operate? Okay, there are two parts, important parts um, of graphic design. You could say media and the message, okay? Now, when we say media, we mean what is this graphic design for? Is it like for your computer screen? Is it for television? Is it uh, going to be a part of a film? Is it radio advertising? Is it uh, something to do with poster or a billboard or a display system? So that's the media part of it. And the message content itself, okay? Within the message content, you have again, several demarcations. So one would be the messaging in terms of the written content that is displayed or it could be audio content if it's a film. Uh, so, you know, what exactly are you saying? Okay, um, you know, Nike, just do it. Okay, that's your content. Just do it, the slogan that they came up with, right? But how is this content being presented? Now, this is where we come to this part of illustration in graphic design. So what element of it is going to be typography and what element of it is going to be illustration, right? So, um, I think one of the very first um, things that come to mind when I'm talking about this form of messaging in media is um, let's take something really common, McDonald's, okay? All of you see it, all of you pass by a McDonald's somewhere in your city frequently, you often order in. Now, I think it's an almost subconscious way your brain responds. When you are looking through Zomato or through your uh, app, whatever app you're using, um, or if you are even you know, passing by and you want to stop, 
that impact of that red okay uh, background along with that yellow uh, what you call the golden arches which is the logo of mcdonalds um i think we've all felt it it gives you that craving you know you may, you may not have planned it but you'd be like chalo let's just order some fries and let's order a coke and a burger it happens all the time now this is no accident my friends this is something that is very well thought out and planned when the uh, people behind this particular logo thought about what would create a subconscious impact on people they came up after a lot of research with the fact that these two colors that is red and yellow were the two colors most likely found in food substance uh, substances and most likely uh, you know uh, to provoke your uh, hunger instincts it acts at that subliminal you know uh, level at making your brain want to order something now they went one step further and here is where the illustration comes in when you look at the very form of the particular letter m that they have done uh it looks uh, almost like french fries wouldn't you agree almost like you know fries and the background reminds you of the ketchup because the color is almost that same color it immediately provokes a response in your brain because your brain you know how that taste is you know how it feels that saltiness that fried crispiness okay i'm sorry i think i'm making everybody very hungry on a sunday morning but this is what i mean so here is a very fine example of how illustrative skills have actually been taken towards typography so what you have is a logo which means it's a letter uh which symbolizes something so that comes under the domain of typography however it has been created in an illustrative way to create the maximum impact so this is one example i would say of using illustration in uh, graphic design um i keep seeing uh, mr uh, dion screen here and it's really amazing because again there is a huge impact here of this particular character on the corner of the screen uh, this character symbolizes power strength i think a lot of things like that am i right mr dion yeah absolutely it symbolizes a superhero superhero design, absolutely the design superhero yeah right right so it's a wonderful looking design uh, it showcases some uh, beautiful illustrative skills uh, i especially enjoy the expression on the character's face because it's like he's ready to take on the world kind of a thing um again it operates at a level where it communicates what you're talking about without actually saying too much in text okay i can see a small text saying run by iitians but i think you don't even need to read that text Uh, when you look at the image it communicates it all so again it's another uh, example of an illustrative form of graphic design so i think you understand what i mean we can take up more questions on this i just want to move a little bit bit more uh, to how this illustration is used what you see and how you know we can uh, take it forward into the next domain of the moving image also um so yeah so when we're talking about graphic design uh, and illustrative skills they come together it one part of graphic design is illustration and one part is typography when you put them together you come up with some beautiful messaging impactful messaging powerful messaging um there was a question in one of my previous sessions uh, so in fact it comes up very often so i'm taking it up right now where some people say ma'am what is the difference between illustration and graphic design uh illustration is a very specific skill it's a skill uh that tests your artistic abilities your creative abilities uh, i'm not saying that you need to be an artist to take it up no because now uh, digital technology has kind of overcome that uh, you can be somebody who doesn't really can't draw beyond math stick figures if you take up the right kind of a course such as the one at itm you will be taught how to really draw and anyway there's a lot about uh, the particular uh, you know uh, there's a lot about uh, Uh, illustration uh, which you can see in your day to day life just one second please just give me a second <clears throat> yeah let's uh, i will be showing you guys a few examples uh, as we go on uh, so yeah you have a lot of digital techniques which you can uh, look at and work on uh let's take a look at a few applications let me just tell you about a few ways and a few places where you 
uh, see graphic uh, illustration and graphic design, and then I'll show you a few examples of that, right? Um, right. Uh, the first thing, as I said, you, you see it in your, all of us are kind of tied up to our screens most of the time. We're looking at our screens. So I think this is the best, best place where you look at virtual backgrounds, you look at uh, social media, you see illustration all the time. Um, other places where you can see illustration, or I'm talking about pure illustration right now being used, is um, any kind of uh, advertising communication, posters, billboards, um, uh, whatever, your flyers, brochures, all of that. Uh, apart from that, you have your magazines. Very often you have things like caricatures, cartoon strips going on in your magazines. Um, you know, that's one thing. Um, also, you have T-shirts, merchandise, all of that sort of thing. Let's just take a quick look. Let me share my screen. Let me uh, just show you a few examples of it, which are basically available on the uh, internet only. So, just give me a second. Is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so uh, these are images that are, I don't know where it's gone. Yeah, I just wanted to show you an image like this. Now, this is a digital illustration, okay? There are no hand skills involved. This is something that has been done entirely by your uh, digital uh, illustration skills. Uh, here, you do not see any text, but you do see a background which, uh, you know, the, the, a whole set of colors and a particular image that's put together digitally to communicate something. And this happens to be uh, the communication of a, a graphic designer, what a graphic designer would be, right? There are many other examples. What I wanted to show you was this one. Uh, okay, because this is a really interesting design. Okay, here's one for a travel agency. That's a foreign illustration. Again, it's, uh, I think, primarily digital, but uh, the basic character has been generated uh, by hand. There was another one that I seem to have lost somewhere here. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'm having a little bit of a problem with my cursor today. Yeah, this particular image, if you could see, uh, this is a you know on top of a t-shirt these kind of images you see very often so i'll come to more of those as we go on um i just i think there's a question here ma'am will you also be talking about the animation course at itm um yes i would love to do that we'll, we'll just get into that next that is actually very much my domain i would love to talk about that right um, so yeah, we've talked about the still applications. I think all of you have, uh, you know, seen all of this. I want to touch upon at this point in time, one very important domain that has come up. Uh, it's been there for ages, uh, comic books, but nowadays it's finding a very refi refined form in uh, graphic novels. Graphic novels. Uh, also, if you guys are familiar with the manga and manga culture of South Korea and Japan, respectively, um, I think it has become a huge, huge thing. And that is one area where illustrators really, really shine. Uh, what I love about it is you're merging storytelling with illustration. Um, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, right? It's about telling a story, communicating your uh, narrative. Um, and graphic design does, uh, sorry, illustration can be showcased so beautifully to tell a story. Um, I am one of those people who are rather old school. I mean, I think the generation is older. Therefore, all of us uh, grew up, I grew up reading a lot. I'm a very avid reader. So I must say the first few graphic novels that I picked up, I was like, what is this? There's so much happening. There's so much visual element happening and not much to read. It was a total flip on the concept of reading a story, which we know we had always been uh, reading books. Of course, there were comic books that always existed, but uh, you know, people who are avid readers generally pride themselves on reading more of the novel, novel kind of thing. But with time, I started appreciating the nuances and the depth, the visual element of 
uh, graphic novels and especially the ones that originate in uh, Japan manga uh, is so exquisite it's so exquisite and I'm sure that naturally extends into the domain of anime uh, which many of you might be popular with so yes in a sense uh, the question that I just uh, uh, you know, read out from the chat box about an the animation course at ITM. It's a natural transition for me to talk about that because illustration moves from the still or the, you know, 2D uh, domain into the 3D and the narrative storytelling domain very, very naturally. All right. So yes, illustration is a part of your visual communication course. It's a part of graphic design, it's a very core and key element of graphic design, uh, but it is also a part of the animation industry, the VFX industry, um, and, uh, you know, all, all of that part of it. So now how does this work? I'll just get to that in a minute. Um, illustration, basically, uh, when, when you do a course in visual communication, you will be learning all the aspects of graphic design. So you have typography and you have specialists who you know work in typography and you have specialist illustrators right a graphic designer is the one who puts them together to create the messages now many graphic designers do their illustrations themselves but there are also some very specialized illustrators who work who have very refined art skills who do illustrations for graphic designers uh, i'll give you an example of uh, book covers have you uh, seen book covers that are very beautifully illustrated um, there is actually one that I wanted to show you. Maybe I'll come to that in a little while. One or two that I wanted to show you. Um, so book covers are and book illustrations are a very uh, specialized part of illustration skills. Okay. So um, many students may have this doubt in their mind, ma'am, I'm not good at art. So how do I do illustration? Uh, this is where, uh, again, I have to say that it's not important how good you are at art unless you specifically want to become an illustrator, which is a niche market. If you are a specific illustrator, you are like an artist. You will be known for your skill and you will be approached by graphic designers for that. Otherwise, um, if you learn graphic design and you become a graphic designer, much of what you need in terms of illustration comes from digital techniques. Where you need somebody specialized to uh, give you some illustration, uh, specific illustrations or very detailed illustrations, there you approach the specialists and incorporate it into your graphic design. Okay, so that's a part about the uh, you know skills involved. Talking a little bit, a little bit about the uh, kind of uh, you know softwares you would be using and. Uh, uh, what you'll be learning. Well, when you do a course in visual communication, you uh, do start off with learning drawing. Illustration is a very, very much a part in the foundation level itself. And moving on in the first few years, you learn about the basics of design, like color, color theory, form, shape, and all of that. And you also are given specific classes on drawing skills so that you get ideas like the proportion and the dimensions and perspective and all of that. Right. Um, so that is the basics of the hand skills. Once you get the hand skills, you are, of course, also taught uh, softwares like InDesign, like Adobe Photoshop, uh, which give you a larger canvas to work with. And you can start incorporating your uh, digital skills into it also. So this is one part of it where I talk, I'm talking about illustration in graphic design. If I move a little bit into the domain of animation and VFX, um, it's a whole huge industry in itself and there are many aspects to it. Where do illustri where does illustration come into that? Uh, very much so in the animation industry because hand animations or 2D animations are back in vogue. Again, I was talking about uh, anime. Um, I don't know, how many of you watch anime? Any can you put up your hands? Okay, Ananya. Okay, quite a few of you watch it. Great. Uh, have any of you watched uh, the recent uh, Demon Slayer? The current arcs that are running? Yeah. Okay, great. So you would have noticed how beautifully uh, the, you know, illustrative skills are combined. What attracts you to this uh, particular, you know, genre or particular viewing uh, platform, anime? I think 
not only is it the powerful storylines, but it is also the way they are depicted, the visual uh, detail and the aesthetic element that is brought in. Now, something like Demon Slayer versus if you look at something like Naruto, which is an older form, where you can see it almost completely hand illustrated. Yes, Atulia is saying they have good art, animation and plot. Yes, thank you, Ananya, for that. So if you look at something like Naruto and you look at something like Demon Slayer now, you can see how much the uh, whole, you know, uh, industry of anime has advanced because now they're combining VFX with hand illustrations to create this really magical kind of a storytelling canvas. So, yes, uh, it does come into the domain uh, very firmly of animation um, as it goes on. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's something that like, okay, if you take up a course in animation and VFX, you'll be learning a lot of things, okay? Um, a lot of it will be also live action, if it's, especially if it's a VFX course, you will be learning green screen trick techniques, you will be learning motion capture, you will be learning the softwares that go with all of that, compositing. Uh, but one very important ele element of all of this is something called background painting or matte painting, okay? Background painting or matte painting is where we create these amazing, amazing uh, kind of uh, environments for your characters to live in. Uh, I think if you've seen movies like uh, Lord of the Rings, um, nowadays there are several series like Game of Thrones. Uh, they were shot on a simple green screen and the environment that they want to show is created uh, digitally, okay? It's an animated VFX background. Um, illustrative skills come in over there too. Illustrators are employed as background painters and matte painters. So that's how the transition of that particular thing happens. However, animation and VFX in itself is a huge stream. Uh, I teach on those courses also. So I would be happy to entertain any questions that you have about any one of these areas. So at this point, I think I've been talking for quite some time. I would really love to have some interaction with you guys. So I think I can start taking up some of your questions at this point. If you would like to, you know, uh, just ask me. Yeah, uh, Devi. Yeah, go on. Go on. Uh, I, I was just reading out some of the comments in the chat box. Devi is saying the way they show movement is beautiful. I think we're referring to anime. Yeah, okay, Atulia has a question um, about the portfolio for illustration. No, wait, wait, okay. Um, question about the portfolio for animation, like how do I submit it and what's necessary? Uh, Atulia, when we talk about portfolio, um, there is no set pattern to it, okay? What we really want to look at is your creative skills. As I said, we're not expecting a student to come in with you know absolutely perfect illustrative skills. I mean, if they did that, there would be really not too much for us left to teach. However, we do want to look at your uh, creative thought process. That's the most important thing. So your portfolio would be submitted online um, as well as it's good if you can keep a hard copy of it uh, accessible. Um, you know, sometimes uh, the people interviewing you may ask to see something physically, but uh, in your uh, portfolio, you can, con uh, you can put in any kind of samples of creative work you've done. So that could be 2D, that could be uh, if you want to show some clips of some kind of a 3D that you've experimented with. A lot of students are experimenting with things like Blender. I think Blender is accessible and easy. So I have seen students submitting work which, uh, you know, little small animation GIFs or small little clips that they've created uh, on that. So that is one thing that helps if you're specifically interested in uh, animation. Uh, even something as rudimentary as a flip, flip book. I hope you know what a flip book is. That is something that would be very nice for animation, right? Um, apart from that, any sketches that you've done, any poster design, uh, photography, uh, any samples of this kind of work uh, is looked at uh, positively, right? Does that answer your question? If you have any other doubts, you can you know, just ask me directly. Thanks, Atulia. Uh, moving on to the next one. Uh, <clears throat> uh, okay, Ashvija is asking, um, what course do you have to specifically do for illustration or does it tie up with graphic design animation courses? 
yes ashwija it does tie up with the graphic design and animation courses especially the graphic design which comes as i said at itm it would be a course in visual communication and under visual communication you will be learning not just graphic design but also many other things you'll be learning typography and you'll be learning uh, several other uh, areas illustration typography you'll be learning a little bit of about space design a little bit about advertising branding all of that comes under the domain of visual, visual communication uh anaga wants to know will a part of will a part cinematography also come in vfx of course of course cinematography is absolutely key and essential to vfx uh, let me tell you uh, the very first and basic thing is to put a camera in your hands and make you go out there and do some photography once you're comfortable with photography you move on to actually shooting live action okay uh, simultaneously you're also being taught 3d softwares and other softwares uh, it's interesting to note that there are cameras placed in this digital surface also so if you're doing a 3d animation you have to do camera and lighting within that also so it works in tandem if you learn it live you know what the kind of placement is in a virtual uh, environment as well so yes cinematography is absolutely key to vfx all right um Okay, there's a question on uh, graphic design course. Uh, if somebody takes up graphic design, uh, can they become an architect or an interior designer? Um, okay. Yes. See, uh, the domain of uh, design is such that you can uh, take it forward into any of the other design disciplines. however okay let me clarify over here uh, it's not a complete a complete absolute yes uh, you obviously cannot do architect you cannot become an architect without doing a course in architecture you are not going to ask somebody who you know draws illustrates create beautiful messaging uh, content uh, you can't ask them to actually build a building because that would be two totally different disciplines right uh, however if you want to go into interior architecture design or interior design yes your design skills apply over there and that is a possible transition especially because you will be very familiar with working on uh, you know things like walk throughs um things like uh, what do you call those 3d mock ups of buildings and all that that can be done and if you have a good strong uh, design aesthetic that can be combined but if you want to become a pure architect as in a person who actually builds or designs buildings then no i don't think that comes under that yeah if i can add to that yeah um yeah so so to become an architect um students need to go through the architecture program they get a bachelor of architecture and then they get a certification from the council of architecture right. so that's a completely different you know Domain. career yeah. path all right so that's important for you to keep in mind uh, but like like um, uh, professor jotsna mentioned there's you know it goes into graphic graphic design is used in interiors a lot and what else yeah 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 um right so those are two distinct stream streams architecture and in, uh, and graphic design but yes graphic design can pair up well with an interior design or an interior architecture design um general design Uh, well there are people who talk about being just designers and i think their forte extends more towards textile uh, towards fashion towards maybe even like you know a little bit of interior and all of that but when it comes to a uh, graphic design usually it's a little more specialized because you learn all the softwares in the course which which help you and these softwares are specific to um, the entire area of graphic design and advertising and you know media communication it goes in that direction so um what would i recommend uh i think it depends upon what the bent of mind of the student is if the student is more interested in uh, creative content creation like you know uh, maybe a little bit of drawing a little bit of messaging uh, films video uh, animation photography uh, spaces even vis visual merchandising to some extent comes a little bit under the visual communication by visual merchandising i mean like when you go to a mall or a you know space in a mall where you see these very attractive displays that have been put up 
um, you know, from by a shop. It's sort of like an indirect form of advertising. Um, all those kind of areas do, uh, they are catered to by a good graphic designer uh, as well, or a visual communicator, not a specific graphic designer, but a visual communicator. So the visual communication course would cater to all of these domains, right? So uh, shall we continue with more questions? Uh, is there any other questions? Or Mandar, would you like to show the video at this point? Just suggest it will be a question. Sorry? Uh, Dion, I just asked uh, Dion, uh, so shall we wait for a few questions or uh, you want uh, Josna ma'am to add a few uh, more things? Right, right. No, I, uh, if, if Josna has uh, has is done with her part of it. I think um, I'm not seeing too many questions coming in, but uh, Sridhar Chandrasekhar is asking on YouTube, what is content writing? And is that is there any association with graphic? That's a wonderful question, actually. I'm so glad somebody asked it. Yes, content writing, again, uh, this is a fascinating thing about visual communication. There are so many aspects to it. And if you do a course in visual communication, there are so many directions in which you can take your career, right? So yes, content writing is a very core part of uh, both advertising and media. Uh, it's a specialized part, but you do it, by doing a course in visual communication, if you have your bent of mind is more towards strong language, writing, uh, written uh, skills, and you have very creative concepts, then content writing is something you can specialize in. Um, an exposure uh, to a course in visual communication would give you the right direction to kind of hone yourself in that direction. You can start interning and working with advertising agencies, graphic design firms. Uh, they all need content uh, specialists. Uh, and then you can take your career on from there. Uh, in fact, you'd be amazed to know that even within the domain of content writing, there are so many different specializations. You need specific content writers for, uh, you know, pharmaceutical companies, for medical companies. You need specific ones for, uh, say, it is something like, um, you know, as I say, an IITJ preparation. You would need somebody with a strong science background to be able to create the content for, uh, you know, creating maybe textbooks or creating, uh, you know, little study material sort of a thing. Uh, the experts provide you the content that needs to be done, but presenting it in a form or writing it in a form that would be good for the students to understand can be done by a content writer. So within that also, there are specializations, um, especially if people with science background are quite in demand over there, uh, especially with uh, firms like pharma firms. I myself have experienced this. I have a science background. At one point in time, I was doing a lot of content writing for pharma companies. And, and it gets interesting, I mean, on this topic, because uh, content writing means that you're writing something very current and something that can be identified by the, uh, you know, shows up in a Google search, things like that. Uh, but really, a graphic along with that content really enhances the visibility of that article. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So that's that's what I'm saying. Again, it you know works on two. I mean, the way the industry functions is that there are some people who are like all in all. They do the graphic design part of it. They do the content. They do all of it. Okay. But more often, it's little teams working together. So there would be somebody with a very strong illustration uh, skill, somebody with a good uh, grasp of the software, somebody uh, who is a good content writer. And this team puts together really amazing uh, content, which uh, you know uh, works really well. Because you have all of these things coming in. You have illustration, you have uh, layout, you have typography, you have you know, your software skills to do exactly what you want, plus the technical part of it and content writing. So yeah, that's that's how it operates usually. Right, and, and, and uh, for example, going forward, how do you see graphic design or illustration evolving as we go forward into a more digital world? Yeah, as I said, you know, already it's come a very long way. It's amazing if you look at some, I, I was recently talking to somebody who owns a printing press uh, old school. He's had a printing press for, I think, 30 to 40 years. Uh, and he was kind of uh, lamenting about the good old days when they actually used to sit down and paint posters. You know, the first draft was done. Or, and he was like partially saying, Ki, Are, madam, 
that time has gone you know now when people used to do it now fatafat sab kuch computer mein karke de dete hain which is uh, you know like everything is done really in a jiffy on the computer not that it is done that fast on the computer but yes compared to uh, doing it by hand we've come a long way so now we've got the best of both worlds because whatever wants to you need to do by hand is still done by hand scan taken into the computer and incorporated into a digital design beautifully and because we have digital design at our fingertips uh, there are so many you know things that can be enhanced add a shadow take away a shadow add a highlight change the color see how it looks all of that is possible so yes already there's been a huge shift and i can only see it becoming bigger as we go i was just talking about this particular anime called demon slayer you know the reason why i'm talking about it is because i saw it quite recently uh, and i was introduced to this whole genre of anime or i rather got into it because of my daughter because that's what the new generation is looking at uh, but what really amazed me was how well they had incorporated incorporated hand drawn characters hand skills with digital technology in terms of vfx uh, so it's the best of both worlds you know they it's it's a 2d animation it, techniques are 2d animation but in that they have brought in so many layers textures colors sounds through vfx that it's like storytelling at its finest so um yeah going forward uh, mr dion uh, naturally the, i think the scope is only going to get bigger the other interesting thing to note here is i think we've all experienced over the last two years of the pandemic how much we've all got kind of bound to the space of our screens of the you know laptops so the the demand for content is only going up okay and this content could be in the form of on, online retail i think all of us got quite addicted to online shopping ordering uh, all of this so our advertising is also influenced online i mean you do not if you want to see for example anything like some apparel or you want to see um, flooring materials for construction or paints the first thing you think of is googling it okay uh, and when you google it you, you it opens up this whole plethora of options uh, that you know you could go like this you could do this you could look at this kind of dress and all of that all of that involves graphic design all of that a um, lot of it involves illustration not all of it is illustration a lot of it is photography also but the key thing to note here is it's about combining the image with text and putting it onto a platform which everybody can relate to earlier we were limited to billboards posters physical spaces now we have the online space and it's only going to be there. i hope i was able to cover what you were trying to say absolutely absolutely yeah. thank you so much um mandar i think there's no more, i don't see more questions coming in so if you could probably share your screen and share the video yeah sure and, yeah, and if anyone has questions please feel free to type it in we can address it after yeah. this video yeah we'll be happy to take up questions if you want to you know ask me directly too that's fine uh, it would yeah. be lovely to see you guys and interact Yeah, so Mandar, you're sharing yeah, your screen, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh. Uh, is my screen visible? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, yeah.
Uh, dear, I'm facing the same issue. I guess there's some uh, problem in my laptop. Not able to share the screen. Sure, sure. If you have yeah. a link uh, to that video. Maybe... So I'll just share the link of the video so students can go through the same. Sure. That'll be great. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I just wanted to show, we were talking about illustrative book covers. So I've just managed to open that up from Amazon. Actually, uh, there is a book that's been actually written by my husband and the cover design for that, we actually brought in a specific illustrator to do it. So it's a nice example of illustration and graphic design. So if you will permit me, I will just quickly share screen and show the students that as well to give them an idea. Um, this is the book, is my screen visible? Yes. yes. Yeah. So here you can see this is a this is a story about uh, you know the it's, it's a children's book basically and it's about wildlife preservation. So it's about specifically about save the tiger kind of a thing, which is something we feel quite deeply about. And uh, my husband came up with a book on that. So what I wanted to show you was this has a very interesting little cover, and we had to bring in a lot of different skills to do this. Um, we brought in an illustrator to create these characters that you can see over here. The, these are the main characters of the story. It's told from an animal's, uh, all the main characters are animals. Okay, and they're talking in human language, but they're animals. So these are the main characters and these were designed by an illustrator who also did a bit of the sketching of the background. You can see the trees and all of that to give the idea of a jungle. But that illustration alone, uh, this was basically an artist or an illustrator who did that by hand. This had to be taken onto a digital platform by the graphic designer and these layers were added where you can see the light and shade happening the mistiness of the uh, jungle. We wanted to give that feeling, you know, the jungle and early morning, the light rays are coming and there's some mist and clouds and all of that. So uh, it was kind of composited all together with a graphic designer who did the text part of it and all of that. So this is just another application or, uh, you know, a little example that I wanted to share with you about uh, how illustration is used in graphic design. Fantastic. All right, uh, I think that's pretty much it for today. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Jotsna and Mandar for having come here and addressing our students and talking about this topic. All right. Um, great to have you guys here. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure interacting with you and with all the students. All right.